The Writing of Harlots Someone had written it on the bricks outside of Mrs. Cunningham's fifth grade class in big ugly letters, Carrie Eats Holly's Cunt. But of course the letters themselves weren't ugly. It was the words. It was that word. And the letters were only made to look ugly by association, the way Holly was made ugly by association with that sentence. It was a complete sentence, a perfectly grammatical sentence, whose subject Carrie was. But while Carrie was a subject familiar to us, he sat behind me in Mrs. Cunningham's class. That object was less familiar, and that verb, though familiar, was unfamiliar in that context to most of us, if not all of us, who filed past it into Mrs. Cunningham's class that morning already knowing much, desiring to learn more. But nothing more was said about that word or that sentence on that day in Mrs. Cunningham's class or the next day or the next. And before we could grasp it or parse it or know it at all, it disappeared or almost disappeared. We could still just make out its skeleton, the faint ghosts of the letters, after Tony, our custodian, did his best to expunge it with a wire scrub brush and bucket. But who was responsible for it? That was the question on everyone's mind and on everyone's lips, except for Mrs. Cunningham's lips, which never formed a word about that word or that sentence. But if she wasn't responsible for telling us what it was or what it meant or where it came from and why, then who was? In time, of course, in our separate ways, we would all learn what it was, what it meant, and where it comes from, and why. But who among us can say he learned it in a way that didn't feel ugly or illicit? Who among us can say he was taught that it comes from beauty or the desire for beauty?